Okay, so you can see I've been busy. <laughs> um, you know, they'll all turn out different, but you know, you just leave trailers behind. Right, remember how you break the strands off into groups of five or six or seven? Here's one that I'm doing a maple. You can see that I took the same wire here. And uh, what I did was, is I took uh, two foot lengths. Actually, in this case, it might have been about 16 inches. And I took uh, 21 strands and then I just folded them in half. And then twisted you know part way up like that and then I'll work this into separate limbs and then I'll just keep branching them off like I'll twist for a while the same way here and then branch off again into threes or fives or whatever and then you just bend limbs off like that bit of work but boy do they ever make stunning trees Um, you can see the last one here, and then you can see there was uh, about five or six wires here. And so I'm coming to the end here. So I'll show you once again how I put a loop. So I got two left here. So I want to extend the limb a little bit further. I just twist like this. And then I want to add two more branches. I just loop it over like this. I've, actually, uh, it'll be three because there's, see, look, one two three so you take that like that you just cross it over and then you just twist the loop and you just keep twisting uh, depending how long you want this extension limb to be and then there's a another branch there and then when you cut that one you can cut it short here and then bend this one out longer Okay, but I'm going to leave them loot because I'm going to use them as a cradle or a saddle to lay the thatching across, right? Okay, so now we're going to do a bit of texturing or barking of the wire armature. And I'm pretty happy with the, just the general rough armature here. There's plenty to work with now. Okay, and like you say, I just love doing trees this way because you can bend them and move them out of the way all day long and shape them and compose them at any stage of the build. You can compose your tree. Like, I mean, what if you, I think I mentioned this before, like, like what if you wanted, like the track was right here, let's say, and then you just wanted this limb to come down a bit lower, kind of create a bit of drama. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, it's like that all the time, right? I've like on short line railways, especially like, you know, most of the regulations don't apply, at least not federal anyway. So you'll see a lot of right-of-ways on short lines overgrown and not maintained in the same way a class one railroad would be. So having trees and foliage close to the track makes, you know, for a more dramatic look, right? And that's why I love trees like this. So I'm just going to sprinkle this on. This is the fun stage because uh, it starts to show you the shape of the tree. You see. I'm going to leave the base here a little bit clear just for now because i got to handle it quite a bit. And we'll just knock it off. So. Okay, so notice how much I recovered after the thatching process. Two thatching processes on this tree and it's pretty much limbed out right okay 
See, so like you put it on fairly heavy and then, you know, once it dries, right, you massage it and stroke it out and I got enough for another tree there pretty much. So it's nice to recover what you can. Okay. So generally black and red brown are the two colors that I mix together. XF1, XF90, red brown too. And I mix them together just to make an umber, 50-50 or whatever, 60-40. And the reason why I want or encourage that is because you want to, because you're never going to learn about shades. Like you're never going to really learn, like instinctively, I mean, and through experience, if you don't just mix on the fly, like don't be so, you know, like I knew a guy used to write down every little used to measure and weigh for gram and, geez, you know, like put that aside, man. Like, uh, this was a little bit darker. I don't know if you can tell really, but... And anyway, so I just used the airbrush, right? Because I can control it better. I can get in closer. You can spray bomb, but it's, you know... Spray bomb works fine too, but for this kind of stuff here, like when you're modeling a tree, it's best to use an airbrush because you can get in there and control stuff. And then when you want to highlight the trunk with a little bit lighter, you can get in there and... You just have way more control. Okay, so this tree's coming together now, the deciduous. I'll just show you how I flock it. And I'm just using this super leaf scale leaves. It's really nice stuff, actually. I really like it. It's it's similar to the knock stuff. And then I have some other stuff. I don't know where it came from, from my museum days, where it's different color on both sides. Like the leaf, like the brighter and darker. I don't know where that came from, but I'm saving that for another tree. But anyway, uh, this stuff's pretty good. So this is uh, very much the same um sort of idea behind the evergreen that i did like this is static grass right so there's been two applications of static grass on here there was the one where i glued up just put glue on the wire here and then just put on 12 mil like that thatched it on when it dried i massaged it away and then i did it one more time put some glue uh, i believe i sprayed it with my airbrush and then sprinkled on 12 mil again just so that uh, they attach you know like uh, here let me just show you so if this is the wire like the main limb like this then here's the 12 mil you know static grass right it goes across like that randomly glued just by thatching well when you put glue on it again the next time like glue gets on the ends here and then when you add 12 mil it goes like this right like it widens the matting so you get a, just a wider branch spread okay like this see okay so now i can bend these out of the way too right so i'm going to just treat these three right here okay so i'll show you what i'm going to do so i'm going to take some straight matte medium or glue of your choice and i'm just going to dab it on i'm going to sort of you know just try to wet them all and even if it sort of um, pools up a little bit that's okay but uh, you want to get those fibers wet because the matte medium will evaporate and and dry completely flat but it's an excellent adhesive like i think it's the best adhesive there is i mean naturally you wouldn't use it for carpentry or anything because it's expensive but for this kind of work it's just beautiful okay so now that i got those three sort of soaked in nice with glue right i'm going to take this leaf now i'm just going to sprinkle it on like that And then I'll do a little bit on the bottom. Isn't that nice? See, when you model a tree, right? I mean, imagine if you started adding sisal 
like the sizal strands I'm going to do on another tree, whether you do even longer limbs on a different style. And once this tree is done, then I can reshape the whole tree back to the way I want it. I can close all this up, you see. Put bend, I can bend the limbs any way I want, so I can actually sculpt the tree, like once it's all flocked. Okay? I think that looks really nice. And then if you want to go back, like just say you want to get some of these, like what really looks good is when it gets onto these little strands here. Like see this here like on the end, if you really want to get into it. I find this incredibly relaxing, personally. Um, then you can, you know, it's when you get the those uh, leaves like, that nice? Okay, so I want to just talk about uh, installing a pin on the bottom of the trees that I build. Like uh, everybody has their own way of mounting. I like to use a skewer because in most cases my sub uh, terrain is either plywood like this and or foam. So if it's foam, I want to be able to plunge my tree in anywhere I want when I compose the scene without having to drill holes if I can help it. But if I'm in plywood, I can drill a hole, right? And then just push the tree into the hole and just leave it. So I can pull that tree if I need to. Because there's going to be grass around it anyway, and this gets reflocked with sawdust, okay? So what I do is, uh, remember how I showed you how I build these deciduous trees where I loop them? If you remember going back, you see how they're making of deciduous trees. They're made from a one you know, several long lengths of wire and then you fold it in half and I, and I twist the bottom and I leave a loop. So I just force a hole. I just open up that loop, right, with a piece of bamboo skewer. They're a dollar at the dollar store for a package. And what I do is I just push the, cut a piece about two inches long or inch and a half. And I lay it in there like that. And then I just bend this loop back like that, like like a base in the tree, okay? And then I take this wire, I pull that tight and I just wrap it around five or six times and then just tie it off so that it looks like this. Okay. Now I got a solid base with a bit of a flare now I can build into the trunk because any big tree like this is going to have a flare at the base for the most part unless it's a park tree and it's been well manicured. So I just take some matte medium I just soak this whole assembly now. some sawdust. And then I just slide it on my rack. I'll just zoom out and show you. Okay, I just have a plywood strong back here with some holes drilled in it. And then I'll just slip that in the drying rack and she's good to go. Now I can at will, I can go, I can go take my trees to the area. I can plunge them into the hillside or near the barn or the bridge or whatever. If I don't like it, I can pull it out and move it over an inch and so on. Right, I like to think that through, right? Like that's an artistic process as well, is uh, laying up each tree and composing several trees together or one with a building or whatever, right? 
build in the ability to move your scenery components and elements around so that you can adjust your scene and balance it. Okay?